At a number 10 spot, we have the 100 Step Cemetery. The 100 Step Cemetery is located in a town of Brazil, India. Remember, I said town, not the country. The cemetery gets its name from the long infamous staircase that lies right in the middle of it, and there are two versions of the legend about the staircase. One legend says that once you reach the 100 step, or the last step, the ghost of a past cemetery caretaker will appear right in front of you and whisper out the time and way you will pass away. However, once he says this, you must climb back down all the stairs, and if you don't count back to 100, the caretaker will take your life on the spot. The other version of this story is that when you go back down these steps, if the number you count is different than the number you walked up with, then your prophecy is false. Much of the stairs are overgrown with vegetation, so counting the stairs is much harder. And more recently, the cemetery even tried to tear out parts of the stairs. Are they trying to physically remove the urban legend from this place? I mean, a free fortune teller? Who wouldn't want that? At a number 9 spot, we're the Green Clawed Beasts. Supposedly lurking in the Ohio River near Evansville, Indiana, is a green clawed beast that has haunted residents since the 1950s. In the hot summer of 1955, Naomi Johnson, her three children, and their family friend Louise Lambeau went for a swim in the Ohio River. When Naomi was about 15 feet away from the shore, that's when she began to arch her back when all of a sudden something wrapped around her knee, pulling her down as well. She immediately started to swim back to shore, kicking whatever hit her in the process. After she was swimming away, she felt her leg get grabbed again from behind, but she was able to grab an inner tube that they were using as a float to get away. The odd thing about this incident was that when she was getting treated for her scratches, the authorities recalled a strange bluish green stain that was on her lower leg at the time. Then a short time after this, a man arrived at Naomi's door with physical evidence showing that he was an Air Force Colonel, and he told her to never speak of the incident ever again. Ever since there has been no sighting of this supposed creature, so much of it is unknown if this creature really truly exists today, but what do you guys think grabbed Naomi in the water that day? And at number 8 spot we have Diana of the Dunes. It's said that if you walk along the shores of Indiana Dunes National Park, you may see a pale naked woman swimming or running around near the waters of Lake Michigan. However, don't be deceived because what you may be seeing is a ghost of a lady who used to do the same thing back in the early 1900s. The real woman's name was Alice Mabel Gray and she lived as a hermit in a driftwood shack along the shore. However, she wasn't always like this. She earned a bachelor degree from the University of Chicago in 1903, but as years went by, she found that the city life and the working life made her more depressed each and every single day. She then decided to escape everything and ever since she's been known as the Diana of the Dunes. Her spirit is not so friendly. It's said that if you get too close to the naked woman, then she may drag you down into the water with her. This is because in her years alive, Alice ended up falling in love with an abusive man named Paul Wilson. So when Alice gave birth to her second child, she ended up passing away from uremic poisoning, which was due to repeated punches to her abdomen. Ever since this incident, her spirit has been nothing but aggressive to young men. At a number 7 spot, we have Devil's Road. The name Devil's Road should give you all the warnings you need before you decide to take a drive down this road. In Jasper, Indiana, there was a school bus full of kids that stalled in the middle of these train tracks. The moment the bus stalled, the kids couldn't help but notice a train coming straight towards them. However, before they could even think to escape, the train ended up smashing right through the bus with all the children passing away immediately and the only survivor being the bus driver. However, when the bus driver noticed there was no survivors, he was so disappointed distraught, he decided to take his own life using a firearm. Nowadays, people claim that the spirits of the children remain on the road. Some have tested their luck by stopping their car on the train tracks and dropping it into neutral, and this is when you supposedly begin to see children walking towards you, or if someone has said their car completely stalls on this railroad. Regardless, I wouldn't recommend doing this because you're just putting yourself in that same position the school bus was in that day. At a number 6 spot with the Culbertson Mansion. Stored away in New Albany, Indiana is the Culbertson Mansion. Out of all the mansions I've mentioned, this has to be one of the most gruesome yet unfortunate histories attached to it. In the 1800s, this mansion was struck by lightning and everyone who was inside of the home passed away from the fire that engulfed the entire place. Then in 1933, the mansion was sold to a local named Dr. Webb and his family. But after a year of living in here, they were all found dead. All their bodies showed evidence of being tortured, yet the case never ended up getting solved. As well, later on it was found that the doctor kept some of his patients locked in the basement. Nowadays, the house offers many haunted tours, 
but staff members still report things they can't explain, and more specifically, in the basement where all the horrific events took place. In the hub for list, we have the Edna Collins Bridge. Out of all the bridges in Putnam County, the Edna Collins Covered Bridge is the most recent. However, despite not being the oldest, it's still believed to be the most haunted out of all of them. Locals claim that the bridge is haunted by a mother and child duo. Legend goes that a little girl by the name of Edna Collins lived in the area nearby and would occasionally swim in Little Walnut Creek, which is the creek the bridge now resides over. Her parents had a tradition of dropping her off on their way to town, and when they returned, they would honk three times to let her know that it was time to go. However, one day after they honked three times, Edna was nowhere to be found. Instead, they searched the nearby creek and they found that she had drowned in it. It's said that shortly after, the mother took her own life and hung herself on the trees where the bridge is located today. And ever since, this bridge has been haunted by this mother and child duo. At number four spot, we have the Whitcombs Library. Before his death in 1852, former Indiana Governor James Whitcomb donated his entire library to Ashbury University, which is now known as DePau University. This library was filled with all the books that he read in his entire lifetime. This collection included one book named The Poems of Ossian, the Son of Fingal, which was locked away in a specific section of the library which was closed to the public. One small boy grew more and more curious about the book and then one day in the 1800s, he decided to sneak into the library and steal the book for himself. However, after he finished the book, he woke up to a spectral finger pointing at him asking who stole the book. Ever since, many believed it was Whitcomb's ghost protecting his books and no one has ever tried to steal a book since. To this day, there are still occasional sightings of his ghost, but as long as no one is stealing his books, then he shouldn't do anything aggressive. At a number three spot, we have St. Mary of the Woods College. St. Mary of the Woods College was opened in 1840 and is the oldest Catholic college in the entire state. The Lefer and Foley buildings on the campus have had many reports of something supernatural lurking inside of them. Some have said they have been grabbed by invisible forces and there are stories of an exorcism done in the Foley building. However, the most notorious spirit found at the college is the Faceless Nun. Legend goes that the Faceless Nun is the ghost of a sister nun who used to teach in the art department at the campus. It was there where she began a self-portrait but passed away from an illness just before finishing it. However, the section has been destroyed and now it seems that her spirit is found everywhere on campus. When people spot her, they are usually stunned and even freeze in terror. At a number two spot with the Pugwudgie. The Pugwudgie is a two to three feet tall creature that lurks in swamps and dense forests. He physically resembles a troll or sort of a goblin, and one of their active spots happens to be in Mound State Park in Anderson, Indiana. Author and archaeologist Paul Startsman claimed to have encountered one of these creatures back in 1927. He claimed to be walking alone in the park when he noticed a little man half his size with abnormally large ears, gray skin, and a mushroom cut. They are not known to attack humans, but are instead known to be great deceivers and tricksters. However, other iterations of the creature say the complete opposite, telling how these creatures are indeed bloodthirsty and need small gifts and sacrifices in order to appease them. One telltale sign you'll know that they're near is from their high-pitched gremlin-like laugh. So you can only imagine the feeling you'd get walking here at night when all of a sudden you hear the green goblin. At a number one spot with the Zion United Church of Christ Cemetery. Potentially the most haunted cemetery in the entire state of Indiana, the Zion United Church of Christ Cemetery is supposedly a hotspot for anyone looking to see something supernatural. Located in Poland, Indiana, this cemetery has gravestones dating back all the way since the 1840s. And the amount of reports coming from this cemetery is enough to make anyone believe there's something sinister inside of it. The ghost that many locals see is the one that walks outside of the cemetery, warning people not to enter the cursed grounds. Some have said the ghost tells them to turn back, and those who have been unfortunate enough to be inside of the cemetery report unexplained sounds and lights, and the constant feeling that they're being watched entire time they're there. Coming in at our number 10 spot, we have Radiation Man. This is the story of a man who was kept alive for 83 days, just so doctors could see the effects of radiation and how long a human could last. In 1999, three technicians at a nuclear power plant in Japan were involved in a catastrophic accident that left one of them, Hishashi Uchi, with the highest dose of radiation any human has ever experienced. Uchi, along with Masato Shinohara and Yutaka Yakokoa, 
were working at a plant when a nuclear reaction occurred, emitting neutron radiation and gamma rays all over the place. As a result, Uchi received a devastating 17 sieverts of radiation, while Sinohara and Yogokawa received fatal doses of 10 and 3 sieverts, respectively. The effects of radiation on Uchi were immediate and severe, causing burns and completely damaging his internal organs and immune system. Despite being treated by a team of top medical professionals from around the world, Uchi's condition continued to deteriorate. He underwent numerous skin transplants and was kept alive through the use of blood and fluids, including drugs and life support. Tragically, on the 59th day of treatment, Uchi's heart stopped three times in just 49 minutes, causing severe damage to his brain and his kidneys. He eventually passed away on December 21st, 1999 due to multi-organ failure, spending the final 83 days of his life in intense pain and suffering. At a number 9 spot, we have the Unit 731. Yup, this story is terrible. Unit 731 was a Japanese biological warfare research unit that operated in China during World War II. It was headquartered in a facility in the Pingfan district, located in China, and they conducted experiments on human subjects in order to test the effectiveness on biological weapons and even study the effects of various diseases. The unit was established in 1936 and operated until the end of the war in 1945. It was led by Shiro Ishii, a Japanese army doctor, and was composed of several hundred scientists and medical professionals. The unit conducted a wide range of experiments on human subjects, including prisoners of war and civilians, often without their consent or even their knowledge. Some of the experiments conducted by Unit 731 included infecting subjects with diseases such as the bubonic plague, cholera, and typhoid fever. They would also study the effects of frostbite by deliberately exposing subjects to extreme cold and performing surgeries on live subjects without any sort of anesthesia. As a result, many of the subjects died in these experiments and the unit is believed to have killed thousands of people during its operation. After the war, many of the members of Unit 731 were granted immunity from prosecution in an exchange for sharing the data they had collected with the United States. This decision has been heavily criticized, obviously, as it allowed the perpetrators of these atrocities to evade accountability for their actions. However, in more recent years, the Chinese government did call for Japan to take responsibility for this Unit 731 and to provide compensation to the victims and their families. The Chinese government was also called for the unit's activities to be recognized as war crimes and for the perpetrators to be held accountable once and for all. At a number 8 spot, we have the Elevator Man. Apparently some time ago, in a towering skyscraper located in Korea, there was a young woman named Karuko. She was a very bright night. 19 year old student who lived in the 14th floor of her building. But on one fateful night, she had an experience in an elevator that would change her life. As the elevators began to close, a handsome stranger managed to slip his hand in order to stop them. The man stepped inside of the elevator and stood very close to Karuko. This is when the two began to flirt and engage in very small talk. The stranger told her he lived on the 13th floor, just one floor below her. As the elevator approached the 13th floor and the man walked out, the man suddenly turned around, turned to Karuko, and said, I'll see you upstairs. He then pulled out a knife as he left, he laughed, and then disappeared towards the staircase. The doors of the elevator then shut, leaving Kruko alone and afraid. As the elevator continued to climb to the 14th floor, Kruko frantically pressed every button trying to get it to stop. But it was all in vain. The elevator doors finally opened up on the 14th floor, and to Kuruko's terror, she found the man waiting for her. She was tragically slain before she could even scream for help, and since then, many have claimed this is a true story, and it's said to be the explanation why elevators now have this stop button. Some even say that the man who killed Kuruko still roams the halls of this building, trying to lure innocent people into the elevator with him. And also, there is a game I mentioned in a lot of my past videos, which include this story. And this is basically the origin story to that. So if you ever want to know more, just search up the elevator game online and you can even play this yourself. At a number 7 spot, we have the P-40 ghost plane. In 1942, American radar detected a strange aircraft approaching their territory from Japan. Although it appeared to be an airplane, it did not have the typical markings of an aerial attack. The American military dispatched two pilots to intercept the mysterious plane. As they approached it, they discovered that the aircraft was a P-40, and they were surprised to find that it bore markings that had not been used since the Pearl Harbor attack. 
Additionally, they observed that the plane was in very poor condition with bullet holes riddling the fuselage and the landing gear completely blown away. The pilots were amazed that the plane was even able to fly in the first place. However, they were shocked to find the pilot slumped in the cockpit wearing a flight suit stained with fresh blood. When the pilots looked through the window, the pilot raised his hand slightly and turned toward them offering a meek wave. Shortly thereafter, the plane crashed to the ground with a deafening roar. American troops arrived at the crash site but found no evidence evidence of the pilot or any identifying markings from the plane. Researchers later found a diary at the crash site that helped them to determine that the plane must have come from Mindanao, which was an island a thousand miles away. The rest of the story still remains a complete mystery. Some have speculated that the plane may have been downed over a year earlier and the pilot managed to survive on his own in the wild. He could have scavenged parts from other downed aircraft, repaired his airplane, and then navigated his way back to the homeland through hostile territory. However, the mystery remains as to how heavy the P-40 aircraft could have taken off without any sort of landing gear. Japanese records confirm that an American P-40 flew over Formosa on December 8th, 1942, but where it came, where it was headed, and how it even got airborne still remains a mystery. Add a number six spot with the Maria Labo. Marie Labo was a woman from the province of Capiz in the Philippines who had a happy family consisting of a loving husband and one son. However, she decided to work abroad in England for the sake of her family's financial stability. Maria was lucky enough to have a good employer who treated her well, but she didn't know that her employer was a vampire, supposedly. It was said that Maria was a combination of a maid and a caregiver to this vampire employer who would always provide her with half-cooked liver to eat. After a few months of working for him, Maria started to feel sick. Little did she know that she has ingested some of her employer's blood, which caused her this unknown illness. Eventually, Maria decided to return home to the Philippines to live with her family. Upon returning home, Maria's husband, who was a police officer, was very surprised to see her. She had already prepared dinner, but but when her husband asked where their son was, Maria just replied, our son is right there. Her husband was confused and it wasn't until he opened the refrigerator that he realized the horrific truth. The meat he had eaten that day was their own son. In a fit of rage, Maria's husband picked up a large knife and slashed her face, leaving a large scar, which is why she was called Maria Labo. Labo means scar in Filipino. From that day on, Maria went on a murderous rampage and stalked or hunted in many different locations within the Philippines. However, her husband continued to hunt for Maria because he just wanted to kill her and end all of this. It is also said that whenever Maria was known to be in any place within the Philippines, people would try to find and kill her in order to save her own children. So there would be this large hunt out for her and it would just be crazy. In the hover list, we have the Hello Kitty murders. Our story begins in May 1999 when a 13-year-old girl approached the Hong Kong police, claiming that a woman whom her boyfriend had helped to kill was haunting her. The police was initially skeptical, but when the girl described how a 23-year-old woman was brutally tortured and bound with electrical wire in a third floor flat on Granville Road 31, they knew they had to investigate. As they searched the apartment, they uncovered some truly horrifying evidence, a large Hello Kitty doll that had been stuffed with a woman's head. The victim of this ghastly crime was Fan Man Yi, a 23-year-old nightclub hostess who has been abducted for over a year, allegedly for failing to repay a $20,000 debt. According to the various media reports, Fan was held captive for over a month, during which time she was subjected to brutal torture on a daily basis until she eventually succumbed to her injuries. The men responsible for her death then chopped up the body into tiny pieces and disposed of it with the garbage. Some versions of the story claim that they even skinned her and boiled her. Although this is difficult to confirm, what is even more terrifying is that her severed head was sewn inside of a Hello Kitty doll, which became the bizarre story for this tragic accident, the Hello Kitty murder. When the news of this gruesome murder hit the press, it horrified residents of Hong Kong and sparked a media frenzy that lasted for months. As if the story couldn't get any more chilling, there was even reports of a shadowy female figure lurking near the apartment building where this happened, and it was captured on various CCTV cameras from nearby buildings. At our number four spot, we have the Tugu Complex. In the city of Malang are three schools who are in deep connection with the horrors committed in World War II. Back in the 1940s, these three schools were used as concentration camps 
programs by the opposing Japanese soldiers. The Japanese created an underground system of crawl spaces and secret rooms that connected each school along with the local train station and governor's office. This would ensure accessibility everywhere. Legend says that two teenagers attempted to explore these tunnels and secret passageways, but after a short time, one student came out screaming while the other one was found weeks later in the train station in a trance-like state and unable to speak about the horrors he saw. Many believe it was the ghost of those who lost their lives there in World War II. Another occurrence is the blood stains on the floor tiles in each of these buildings. And the odd thing is, is that workers say that removing these stains are nearly impossible and some would even fall ill after completing the cleanup job, which is why they have stopped doing it completely. At a number three spot, we are the Orang Minyak. The Orang Minyak, or the Oily Man, is a creature that takes the shape of a man that is covered in a thick murky black oil. It comes at the darkest time of night when it's almost impossible to see. It snatches young women in rural villages when they're sleeping, and this is why many people fear oil spills in the country, oddly enough. It can shapeshift into oil to slip through cracks in the walls and the floors, so there's basically no place to hide from the Orang Minyak. In Malaysia's past, young women were told to wear clothing that was worn by a man so that this creature couldn't catch their scent. Keeping a mirror nearby it was also a must because this creature doesn't like to see their own reflection. This became such a big urban legend that some girls would cover the rooms in all mirrors. But in my opinion, that is just as creepy as this creature. Number two, the Karak Highway. This Malaysian highway is said to be the world's most haunted highway. It is a 70 kilometer long interstate highway that connects Kuala Lumpur to the Genting Highlands. The amount of paranormal reports from this highway alone is enough to make someone take a way longer detour instead. The first of these incidents happened when a couple and their baby were returning one night from vacation. The car then suddenly broke down on the side of the road, and as he looked for someone to help, he notices the highway was completely empty. So he walks up to the closest nearby phone booth to call for help, but the man never ended up returning. After a few hours of waiting, his wife calls the police, but when they arrive, they tell her to not step out of the vehicle and to not look behind them. After walking a distance away, she turns around to see her husband's headless body being devoured by a banshee-like creature on top of their car. Also on Karak Highway, if you find yourself stuck behind a yellow Volkswagen Beetle, just get away from it. This vehicle is known to stalk drivers and even cause them to get into fatal accidents. So be extra careful if you guys decide to drive near this area in Malaysia. At a number one spot, we have the Mongolian Death Worm. The Gobi Desert, located between Mongolia and China, is said to have a Mongolian Death Worm, otherwise known as an intestine worm, due to its appearance of being fleshy and red in color. This two to seven foot long creature has the ability to spit out venomous liquid out of its mouth. And if you ever get close enough to touch the creature, it is believed that the entire body is covered in a sticky poisonous substance that will kill you on touch. And if that wasn't enough, it can even electrify you the same way an eel can. While movies on the creature depict it as being this large colossal being, it's actually believed to be a lot smaller at around 7 feet. Regardless, the fact that this creature can hide anywhere in the desert sands and come out with basically no weaknesses makes it one of the most dangerous and scariest ones on this list. At number 10 spot, we have Crisper Babies. Imagine you could customize yourself however you like, including your height, your skin color, your voice, and maybe testosterone for men. Well, this is what Chinese researcher Ho Zhenku did. In 2018, the Chinese researcher made the world's first gene-edited baby using CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR was a new technology that allowed for DNA editing. Specifically, Ho was trying to encode HIV co-receptor with the goal of making a set of baby twins resistant to the virus. Except this form of gene editing is more scary than that. Scientists say that it can be used for virtually any other modification. At our number 9 spot, we have the social credit system. In 2014, China released a renowned social credit system. The one most of us have heard about, you know, on TikTok, YouTube, everywhere has talked about it. But many of us don't understand how it works. It basically is a system that works with AI, CCTV, surveillance footage, and listening devices that either rewards you or takes away points. In a way, these points decide how valuable you are as a person in the society. The fear of having a low social credit score score is nationwide because you may be put up on a massive billboard for everyone to see and mock. Examples of how you can increase your social credit score include talk about good about the Chinese government on social media, donating to charity, helping people around your community, teaching Chinese, basically anything that's good or good for China. To lose points, you can drive over the speed limits, litter around, 
play your music a little bit too loud, or even spending money on something that they deem is dumb purchases. And punishments for having low scores could mean bans from public transit, slowed down Wi-Fi, or even banned from any luxurious restaurants or hotels. The fact that they implemented the Black Mirror episode into real life is scary enough, but the fact that the government is constantly stalking and judging you is even more terrifying. At a number 8 spot, we have Super Drones. To increase their military presence in the open waters, China has unveiled a mothership named the Zuhei Yun, which carries over 50 advanced unmanned drones. So basically, it's an unmanned boat carrying autonomous drones, so no human is on board, and yet the ship is capable of destruction on a different level. Each drone is very intelligent. Each one knows what the other one is doing, so if these drones decide to attack a human, then all of the other drones would attack too. Warfare without the use of human soldiers is horrible. These drones can move at the speeds no human can reach. They can hit and detect at ranges no human could ever possibly think about. And they're able to be made like, just like that. Just imagine if they decide to put their entire funding on these drones and made a complete army. Elon said this about the situation. You make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, and explode. You can do that right now, no extra, no new technology is needed. Right now. At our number 7 spot, we have the artificial sun. Located at the Institute of Plasma Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Hefei, China, lies the sun. But Andrew, the sun is in outer space, not in China. Sorry, my bad. The artificial sun. Sounds pretty terrifying on the surface. Like just imagine how hot the sun is and how much power is contained within that. Fortunately, their purpose was for something else well needed in the future and that is energy. There is no question we're running out of fossil fuels and all the other methods we have tried are just not sustainable over long periods of time. China then created the sun to unlock clean and limitless energy. Then in this year, they were able to reach a record high of 126 million degrees Fahrenheit at its core. And for those who don't know, that's five times hotter than the sun. They needed this core so hot because this intense pressure and the high temperature make atomic nuclei fuse together which creates new elements or energy. Except in this case, this sun could make limitless energy. At number 6 Paul, we have AI supremacy. China has been leading the world in the development of artificial intelligence for years now. China has also made significant headway in developing practical applications of AI. In particular, the country is making major strides in self-driving cars, facial recognition and voice recognition, especially used with their social credit system that I mentioned above. But should we be worried? Yes and no. AI is good for its various uses, but in the hands of the wrong people, AI could mean the end of our civilization. And in more scary news, according to The Telegraph, the Institute of Artificial Intelligence at HIFI, Comprehensive National Science Center created an AI program that could allegedly analyze brain waves and facial expressions to gauge whether a person is loyal to the Chinese Communist Party, basically claiming that it could read our minds. Right in the hump of our list, we have supersonic missiles. China has the second largest budget on their military, so best know they're chasing USA in the arms race especially in the missile arms race with the recent developments of a hypersonic missile. For those who don't know, hypersonic missiles are these missiles that can travel between 5 to 25 times the speed of sound, which makes them increasingly hard to hit, along with the fact that they can operate in a different region of the atmosphere. To put it in perspective, slower subsonic missiles travel a bit lower and intercontinental ballistic missiles are a bit higher, which makes these guys right in the middle region where many countries don't have the capability to detect. This summer, China has had claimed that they sent hypersonic missiles out and it went around the world. The scary thing is, is that Russia has claimed their hypersonic missiles are able to carry nukes around the world, and China is only growing their nuclear arsenal as we speak, with many estimating that they would have about a thousand warheads by the end of the decade. At number 4 spot, we have facial recognition. I elaborate about this on the past points, but I want to show you guys just how scary facial recognition software is. At any given time, China's CCTV surveillance cameras can detect a person, who they are, what family they came from, what crimes they committed, what they do for work, and obviously their social credit score. China's facial recognition system logs literally every single Chinese citizen and they have a population of 1.4 billion people, meaning that database is probably massive. China has also been accused of using this to commit the atrocities done against the Muslims in the country. They did this by using the same AI to locate Muslims within the crowds and later approach them for questioning. Being watched by the government on all your action definitely affects the behavior of a human. So in a way, this technology is controlling the population to act a certain way deemed appropriate by the Chinese government. 
Guess wearing hyper realistic mask is the new thing to do in China. All the way at a number three spot, we have an EMP. We mentioned hypersonic missiles in my last points, but they also have the capability to carry EMPs. EMPs or electromagnetic pulse is an intense electric burst that damages electronics over a given area. It acts like a giant magnet breaking everything electronic along its path. This would mean a complete shutdown of power grids and it can even corrupt the data inside of hard drives, which is detrimental if used on government buildings and areas. Basically, this could cause cities to be in complete darkness. Although it doesn't do anything to humans directly, the issue is much bigger than that. Have you ever spent a day without internet or power? How many issues did you have initially? Now imagine that at a larger scale where your government is in complete darkness as well. Sounds like a huge threat. At number two spot, we have biological warfare. Many have claimed that the coronavirus originating from Wuhan, China was actually a biological weapon they released to cause global panic. Allegedly, Chinese military scientists were already looking in 2015 how to create a weaponized biological weapon based on documents obtained by the US State Department. Although China declined any sort of allegations towards releasing COVID on purpose, it's widely known that China is notorious for lying and hiding everything not from just the world, but their own citizens. After seeing how the world reacted to the pandemic, biological warfare seems like the best way to control citizens and cause international panic. So whatever China did, it worked. At number one spot, we have stronger military planes. As I mentioned earlier, China is advancing their military very, very quickly after pouring in more and more money every single year. One of their military advancements include the J-20 fighter jet, and it was made with a purpose to combat the American fighter plane, the F-22 Raptor. Notorious for its stealth, speed, and agility, the J-20 is capable of reaching speeds up to 2,000 kilometers per hour, but they are not known for the speed. Instead, the Chinese government emphasized the stealth component, making it an effective long-range interceptor. They have currently built an arsenal of around 200 of them, which are all functional and ready for a battle. General Wilsbash discussed and praised another one of Chinese planes named the KJ-500, mentioning their features of long-range air-to-air missiles and how that greatly changes the playing field in the air. At number 10 spot, we have the water tank of Dapashi. Located in Dapashi Basundara, I am so sorry if I mispronounced that, lies this innocent-looking underground tank to store water around the community. Although this is necessary for any community and serves as a benefit, many locals are actually too afraid to go anywhere near it. Of course, this doesn't mean that they couldn't get their water due to fear. Instead, they would probably just ask someone else to get it for them. But what could stop people from getting a basic necessity like water? It all started with the sounds of crying, shouting, and other strange noises coming from inside of the tank. And it was said that the sounds grew even louder by the nighttime. This is also the time where locals claim that they also see the spirit of a decomposing man standing nearby the tank. Legends say that a group of robbers mugged a man near this water tank and instead of a quick theft one of the men accidentally killed the man so they thought that they could put the body inside of this tank and they locked it but instead hours later they would hear the man struggling for his life inside of the water tank soon after the man would pass and the robbers would get caught but imagine drinking from this water tank after this incident doesn't this kind of remind you of Cecil Hotel a bit anyone at number nine spot we have Raniban many people know Raniban for their breathtaking views and incredible sceneries but inside of this nature escape is hidden something dark Within the jungle of Rhineban village, there is this gigantic tree looking straight out of a cartoon with its widespread and exposing roots. Except take away the beauty from this tree and you'll understand why every local avoids this. Warning, the story is pretty explicit so viewer discretion is advised. Legend goes that several years ago, a man assaulted and murdered a girl right underneath this tree. After some research, this turned out to be a true story and has a lot more disturbing details that I couldn't mention on this video. However, after her death, people in the area started to hear noticeable crying coming from underneath the tree. But when they went to investigate, nothing was there. And to make things even more spookier, just days after this, the man who murdered the girl was executed by hanging on the same tree. So best believe there's more than one ghost sitting underneath it. At number eight spot, we're the ghosts of Mount Everest. Being the tallest mountain in the world, people are bound to come in thousands to conquer the challenge. However, with a fatality rate at 14%, many climbers have not been able to finish a trip and their bodies still lie on this mountain to this day. So best believe after seeing these bodies and hearing their horrific stories, some ghost stories in Everest are bound to pop up. On your journey to the top, chances are you'll come across the 3,000 corpses that lie on the mountain to this day. One is a man known as Green Boots, as seen on the body at the time of his death, but his real name is Swang Bajor. Many climbers claim to see the apparition of this climber with Green Boots encourage them to push through the journey. Being at such an extreme height, many mountaineers suffer from altitude sickness and causes many to see vivid hallucinations, with the majority of them claiming to see ghosts all around them. And I'm not 
not surprised. At number 7 spot, we have the Royal Palace of Nepal. On June 1st, 2001, one of the worst royal massacres occurred at the Royal Palace of Nepal. The deaths included 9 members of the royal family, including King Barindra and Queen Ashraya. The culprit turned out to be the son and crown prince, Dipendra, who is said to have opened fire on the palace grounds when a party was happening. He shot his own dad, his own mother, and his own siblings. And since we're talking about a monarchy, and also because he killed all other lines of succession, he was appointed king, but only for a temporary time as he was in a coma since the attack due to shooting himself. Shortly after the massacre, locals around the palace begin to hear sounds of screaming, shouting, and the most notorious sound they would document is the sound of gunshots. They claim it was the gunshots from the massacre, and its haunting sounds are still trapped in the palace to this day. At number six spot, we have the Lakey Dance. To educate y'all in Nepal culture, one of their infamous traditions is this Lakey Dance. This is considered the dance of a demon, and although the name is pretty daunting, the reason they do this is not. So Lakey is a term they use to denote carnivorous demons, so the story goes that Lakey fell in love with a Nepalese girl. So in an attempt to win her heart, the demon decides to take human form to see his lover, but when he decides to enter the city, everyone decides to capture him. Well, because he is a demon. So the king meets with his demon and makes a pretty generous offer. He proposes that he gives the demon a place in the city only if he promises to protect the children from tragedies and other supernatural entities. So the demon agreed, hence the dance. The costumes they use are both beautiful and pretty terrifying, depending on how you want to look at it. And one odd thing about this tradition dance, opposed to other traditional dances, is that this dance is not taught, but it's said that the dancers have it inherited through their genes. This also causes many others to believe that the demon is in fact controlling them, but in the end of the day, he means well, so it's okay. Right in the humper list, we have Devgat. Devgat is a religious Hindu site located in Chichwan, also known as Aryaga. On July 12, 2009, police discovered several human skulls and bones scattered all around the area. The case remains unsolved to this day. Well, it's because the grounds were formerly used for cremation. Groups like the Agoris and Tantrics come here to do some questionable rituals as well, which only adds to the local belief that this place is truly haunted. Specifically, locals claim to see around four to five women apparitions approaching the river by night. They appear to be dancing, but they're floating above the ground. The craziest thing about this is that they only start this dance by lighting themselves on fire, and only when they are completely engulfed in flames is when they'll begin their dance. And people claim to see their dance daily. At number four spot, we have Mugling and Naryangat. If you want to take a hike in Nepal, this place is definitely a must with their stunning waterfalls and untouched nature. Except despite this beauty, locals warn tourists to not travel down the roads nearby at night. This is because many have reported hitchhiking ghosts who disappear shortly after being picked up. As well, they also claim to see apparitions running in front of their car, which only causes a lot more accidents in the area. Police have already discovered several human bodies in the area with many of the cases still unresolved. This led many to believe in the supernatural, but many others proposed a serial kill in the area, and it would make sense. But two theories, two bad options. In the past, the towns around the highway were just deserted fishing regions, which was a dangerous place for crime and violence. The spirits found on the highway were said to be tortured souls whose remains might lie unattended in the woods still. At number three spot, we have the Kia. A Kia is translated into a ghostly figure, but ghosts in Nepal are seen as something different than we see in the Western world. In Nepal, it's widely believed that every house contains a Kia and their backstory. Like any ghost, these Kia can either be good or they can be bad. The good will obviously protect the family, the home, and your luck, but the bad ones will do everything in their power to destroy your family and ultimately every single one of your lives. You'll know if you've seen a Kia because they are pretty distinct. They appear as a slender skeleton, so in a way they act as a poltergeist because you can see them the whole time instead of them just being invisible like any other ghost. It's believed they like to pull pranks like throwing objects around the house and throwing blankets off of you. And in some cases, they will try to scare the family so bad that they will choose to leave the house completely, leaving the Kia all alone in the house. Although you can see this ghost, the majority of people will never actually know if they have a Kia in their place, and only you'll know if you fetch it out and seek one. Maybe you'll have one, but who knows. At number two spot with the Bokshi. Nepal legend says that witchcraft is widely practiced in remote areas in Nepal, except at this time, their witch description was far from accurate. Basically, any woman who had something bad to say or raised her voice at the patriarchy would be considered a witch or a Bokshi. The problem with Bokshi is that it has become so extreme that women are being murdered in the name of this specific ritual and are forced to become a ghost where they will be lost and seen roaming around the streets looking for answers. Even to this day, people are getting accused of being witches. Am I being confused or am I in the Salem witch trial still? Because why are people still believing in this stuff? Just for excuse to execute women. I will never get it and good for girls for haunting the streets for this one because this one is kind of reasonable in my opinion. At number one spot, we have the Sundarijal. Located nearby Kathmandu is a river that is nowhere near your regular rivers back at home. Back in the day up until now, the river has been mainly used as a source of drinking water but the fact many locals claim that the river is haunted has led many people to avoid a necessity like water. The river runs through a rainforest which is said to have restless 
souls hid it inside of it. As well, many have said that even touching the river can lead to your doom. Witnesses have seen locals and visitors reaching the river's edge only to tumble over and drown shortly after. And for some statistics, at least one person loses their life in this very river every single year. Now, as the years go by, the body count begins to rise up, causing more and more restless spirits. It could almost be said that this river is the closest thing to nature's own human sacrifice. Number 10, the cursed Kleenex commercial. In 1986, Kleenex released a commercial in Japan that has sparked a series of disturbing urban legends. The ad featured a woman in white and an ogre looking child sitting on a pile of hay and enjoying Kleenex tissues while the song It's a Fine Day by Jane and Barton played in the background. While almost instantly after the commercial was aired, TV stations and Kleenex corporate allegedly began receiving complaints about the ad, which many found very unsettling. Some people claim that the entire film crew met untimely deaths in freak accidents following this, while others said that the child in the commercial had passed away immediately after filming. There are also rumors that the actress Kaiku Matsuzaka had either passed away or been committed to a psychiatric hospital or even became pregnant with a demon baby following the commercial. Others claim that when the ad came on at night, the singer's voice in the commercial transformed from that of a young soprano to a raspy old woman's. And the ad became so unsettling to the public that Kleenex eventually pulled it and replaced it with a different one. However, after doing further research, Kaiku Matsuzaka, the girl in the video, is alive and well. And besides that, it's not that bad of an ad. Or at least I think that. At a number 9 spot, we have the Sony Timer. The Sony Timer, also known as the Sony Kill Switch, is a rumor feature that is said to exist in electronic devices produced by Sony. The feature was that Sony devices were equipped with a timer that causes the product to stop functioning after a predetermined period of time, forcing you to purchase a replacement. Considering the stuff we know about the Apple update slowing your phone down, this is really not a surprise now. Anyways, the legend of the Sony timer originated in Japan in the 1980s and early 1990s, and despite the lack of concrete evidence to support the myth, a significant portion of the Japanese population believed in it. The legend remained confined in Japan until 2006, when a recall of over 4 million Dell laptops equipped with defective Sony lithium batteries rekindled the legend of the Sony timer. And despite Sony's efforts to contain the rumor, it eventually came to the knowledge of consumers outside of Japan and had a negative impact on the sales of Sony VAIO laptop computers. Then more recently in 2021, the legend resurfaced once again when an anti-cheat measure in the PlayStation Network had the potential to render games unplayable on certain PlayStation consoles. But much of this is still speculation and such a thing is not confirmed whether or not it truly existed. But we really know that they try to make our devices bad so they want us to buy a replacement. We all know that. At a number 8 spot, we have the Alice Killings. The Alice Killings remain one of the most mysterious and unsolved serial killings in Japanese history. From 1999 to 2005, five killings took place, each with a calling card left at the scene by the killer. More specifically, a playing card with the word Alice would be written on it on the victim's blood. The victims were diverse, ranging from a restaurant owner, to a high school student, to a college student, to a nurse. However, they all shared the eerie and gruesome playing card left at the scene of their murders. The first victim, Sasaki Megumi, was a 29-year-old restaurant owner known for her strong personality and excellent cooking. She was last seen alive walking home from a party, and the next morning, her body was found in the woods, torn apart, and impaled on tree branches with the Jack of Spades card found in her mouth. The second victim, Yamane Akio, was a singer whose body was found in a bar. His vocal cords ripped out and a gunshot wound to the head. The King of Diamonds card was found in his hands. The third victim, Kai Sakura, was a high school student whose body was found in a shallow grave, mutilated and with a crown sewn onto her head. The Queen of Clubs card was found on a stick marking the grave. The fourth victim, Hasegawa Hiroki, was a college student whose body was found with the Ace of Spades card. The fifth and final victim, Takahashi Ayumi was a nurse whose body was found with the Joker card. After doing further research, fortunately this person never existed in Japan. But in reality, there was a serial killer who was caught that was using playing cards. Except it was in Spain, not Japan. They were caught in 2003 and sentenced to 142 years in prison. And not to worry, they do not have a pack of playing cards with them, nor will I think they will ever be allowed to play with cards ever again. Number 7, The Howling Inuwaki Tunnel. 
The legend of the Unuwaki Tunnel and the village has been a source of fascination in Japan for decades. Located in the remote mountains of the Fukuoka Prefecture, the tunnel is said to be haunted by the ghosts of those who went missing inside of it, and is only accessible through an abandoned village called the Inuwaki Village. According to the legend, all who enter the village are doomed to a violent death, and the Japanese constitution does not apply there. The legend of the Inuwaki Tunnel and village may have been inspired by a real life murder that took place in the tunnel in 1988. According According to the story, a group of teams kidnapped, robbed, and tortured a young man before burning him alive in the tunnel. The tunnel being remote and rarely used by traffic was a popular spot for gangs and the brutal murder likely contributed to the creation of the legend in the first place. Today the tunnel is considered one of the most haunted places in Japan with large concrete bricks blocking its entrance but that hasn't stopped adventurers from trying to enter it. Locals say that electronic devices and even their cars often break down when they're around this tunnel and that others sometimes hear the sounds of barking dogs and ghostly screams emanating from deep inside of the tunnel. The legend has inspired numerous films and books and other sorts of media including the 2020 film Howling Village from Juan creator Takashi Shimizu. Number 6, The Yaomaba. Ever wanted to take a hike in the mountains of Japan? Well, just be on the lookout for the Yaomaba, also known as the Mountain Witch who supposedly resides in these elevated regions of the country. Yaomaba is often depicted as an old woman with long unkept hair and a wild experience who lives in the mountains and is associated with the spirit world. According to the stories, this creature is a benevolent figure who helps lost travelers find their way home, while in other stories, she is portrayed as a malevolent being who lures people into the mountains and causes them to go missing. Some locals claim that she was once a regular girl who ran into the mountains to escape false accusations. Here she grew angry and resentful and would eventually have cannibalistic tendencies along with practicing black magic. So on your next hike, don't be deceived by anyone you might come across because the amount of encounters with this creature leads me to believe that she's really up there in the mountains of Japan. Number 5, Kagomi Kagomi. Kagomi Kagomi is a Japanese children's game and in the game, a group of children joins hands and walks around in circles around a child who is chosen to be the oni or demon. The oni sits in the center of the circle with their eyes covered while the other children sing the Kagomi Kagomi song. When the song is over, the oni has to guess the name of the person standing directly behind them. This game takes a sinister twist when a group of people found themselves caught in the game on a foggy suspension bridge. In this case, the group was split into two cars, with the first car carrying three people and the second car carrying four people. So when they reach the bridge, it is already getting dark and the fog is not helping. The first car comes to a halt and the couple gets out, joining hands. They then climb over the railing of the bridge and throw themselves off much to the shock and horror of the other passengers. One of the other people in the car is found talking to themselves, repeatedly muttering the quote, mustn't go. The couple is later found dead and is ruled to have both taken their lives. When they ask the remaining survivors of the first car what happened, they say that a girl wearing kimono suddenly appeared in front of their car, causing them to stop. This is when they said that their car was encircled by a group of children who then began saying kagomi kagomi. The children were enticing the passengers to join hands with them and the couple eventually gave in while the manager was protected by religiously repeating the phrase, mustn't go. Number 4, The Red Room Curse The Red Room Curse is a legend that has long circulated on the internet in Japan with various versions of the story being told. At its core, the legend involves a mysterious pop-up ad that appears on a person's computer announcing their impending death. According to the most common version of the legend, while browsing the internet, the victim will be presented with a pop-up featuring a black text on a red background that says, do you like blank? When the victim tries to close the pop-up, it reappears with the text changed to, do you like the red? room and the screen turns red displaying a list of names of the red room's victims. After seeing the pop-up the victim will sense a mysterious presence behind them and then lose consciousness. They will later be found dead in their home with the walls of the room in which they are discovered painted red with blood. The origins of the legend can be traced back to a Japanese interactive horror animation that was uploaded to GeoCities in the late 1990s. However the legend gained notoriety in 2004 due to the Sasebo slashing, a murder case involving a young girl girl who is a fan of the animation and had the video bookmarked on her computer at the time of the murder. So there is some truth to this. But what do you guys think about the curse? Real or not? Number 3, The Cursed Poem, Tamino's Hell. 
Published by Japanese poet Saiju Yasu, it is said that one of his poems named Tamino's Hell is cursed and could kill or haunt people if read loud. So just to not die, I'll be playing it safe and I'll just show you the poem rather than reading it. In 1974, Japanese filmmaker Terayama Suji directed a movie based on Tamino's Hell. Unfortunately, he ended up passing away in 1983. This is where people first believed that the movie was cursed, since the poem was used and read in the movie. As time went by, people began forgetting about the incident, but then in 2004, one Japanese writer published a book based on the poem, saying, quote, if you by chance happen to read the poem out loud, after you will suffer from a terrible fate which cannot be escaped. It's said that even hearing someone saying the poem out loud can lead your life into disaster or even death. So let's read it out loud. I'm just kidding, everyone relax. Nowadays, this poem is feared internationally, but for those who remain spectacle, come on. Give this one a read. Number two, The Curse of the Colonel. This might be odd to hear, but apparently a baseball team in the Kansai region of Japan named the Hunchin Tigers are supposedly cursed by the ghost of Colonel Sanders. Yes, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken. According to legend, the curse was placed on the team because of the colonel's anger over the treatment of one of his storefront statues, which was thrown in the Dotonbori River by celebrating Hashin fans after their team victory in the 1985 Japanese champ, which was thrown in the Dotonbori River by celebrating Hashin fans after their team's victory in the 1985 Japan Championship Series. The curse was said to explain the team's subsequent 18 year losing streak and many people believe that the team would never win another Japanese series until the statue was recovered. The curse has also been compared to the curse of the Bambino which was said to inflict the Boston Red Sox until they won the World Series in 2004. Despite the supposed curse, the Hashin Tigers have appeared in the Japan series three times since the statue has been thrown into the river, losing in 2003, losing in 2005 and losing in 2014. Whether or not the curse of the current is real, it has become an enduring and fascinating part of the Japanese sports legends. And also, the first time I've ever heard of the Kentucky Fried Chicken founder cursing something. Number one, human sacrifice at the Meiroka Castle. The Meiroka Castle, also known as the Mist Castle, is a Hiroyama style Japanese castle located in the city of Sakai. It is considered to be one of the oldest castles in Japan and is said to be protected by a mist that appears whenever an enemy is nearby. According to the legend, the castle was built at the end of the Sengoku period in the 1500s with the use of human sacrifice known as Hitobashira. The practice of Hitobashira or human pillars was believed to appease deities and protect against natural and man-made disasters. For those who don't know, it is basically making humans into the stone pillars and the walls that make up a building. It was commonly used in the construction of large buildings such as castles, dams, and bridges. However, the story of Mayuroka's castle's Hitobashira centers around a woman named Oshizu, who is a poor one-eyed mother of two. When the construction of the castle was plagued by problems and the walls kept collapsing, Avisal suggested the use of human sacrifice. And this is when Oshizu was chosen for the sacrifice, and she only agreed to this on the condition that one of her children would be made into a samurai. Oshizu was entombed under the pillars of the castle, with stones being placed on top of her as she was slowly being crushed to death. It is said that she accepted her face stoically, knowing that her children would have a better future as a result. After her sacrifice, the walls of the castle remained standing, and the construction continued without further issues. However, the man responsible for the castle's construction, Shibara Katsutoya, did not follow through on his promise to make Oshizu's son a samurai. As a result, Oshizu's spirit returned to haunt the castle, causing the moat to overflow every spring in a phenomenon known as the Tears of Oshizu. To this day, the Mairoka castle is said to be haunted by the vengeful spirit of Oshizu. Some claim to have seen her ghost wandering the castle grounds or heard her haunting cries in the castle during some nights. At a number 10 spot, we have the Yeti. In a recent discovery that has sparked a flurry of excitement among Twitter users, the footprints of a Yeti were found by an Indian army mountaineers near the Makulu base camp in Nepal. The footprints, which measured a staggering 32 inches, were photographed and then posted on Twitter, prompting people to speculate whether the expedition team was actually serious about their findings or they're conducting a trolling experiment on their followers. For those unfamiliar with the Yeti, it is the mysterious cousin of the Bigfoot, both part of the same extremely elusive family. The legend of hairy oversized hominids lurking at the outer reaches of civilization has been around for centuries and is part of the folklore of several cultures. But could these 
footprints really be from the Yeti? And if Yetis are real, how could they have existed for so long without one clear HD photo? According to Daniel C. Taylor, author of Yeti, The Ecology of a Mystery, the footprints were most likely created by a bear and its cub, rather than a dinosaur size or mythical half-human creature. While the footprints in the photos appeared to lead into bushes, Mr. Taylor noted that he would expect to find a clear set of prints where the trail leads to. But this doesn't mean there's no Yeti. Mr. Taylor even listed three types of Yetis in his book. The first Yeti is the legend, much like Santa Claus. The second Yeti is the Yeti that lives inside of people, fueled by their need to be closer to nature. And the third and final Yeti is the one that actually made the footprints, the mama and her cub. At our number 9 spot, we have the Beer Hospital. Beer Hospital in Nepal has been providing free medical services to the abandoned, helpless, and poor patients. However, the hospital has been failing to ensure the safety and comfort of these patients. Patients like Bikash Tharisha, who is diagnosed with tuberculosis, and Jude Maya Bajul, who is diagnosed with breast infection, has been receiving free medical service at this hospital, but they have not been provided with proper rooms and beds. The hospital has allocated 26 beds for abandoned patients in the emergency ward, which is not sufficient for the number of patients being brought in daily by the police. Due to the lack of beds and human resources, the quality of treatment has been deteriorating rapidly, resulting in more than 50% of such patients succumbing to their diseases. And you know what that means? Some supernatural activity as well. On top of that, there are rumors that a notorious satanic cult operates inside of the hospital in which they conduct dark rituals and human sacrifices in the basement. Visitors to the property constantly report different sorts of paranormal activity and they mention apparitions, disembodied voices, and strange mists that seem to appear from nowhere. Number 8, Sundar Bang. Also considered the river that needs human sacrifice, this waterfall is probably not the best place to visit in Nepal. Sundar a region located near the bustling city of Kathmandu, is known for its large river that provides drinking water to the city's inhabitants. However, despite its importance, the locals believe that the river is haunted and they refuse to go anywhere near it. The river flows through a lush jungle which is rumored to be home to many tormented spirits. According to legend, the river has a thirst for human lives and and takes the lives of those who come near it. Every year there are incidents where tourists and locals fall into the water and completely vanish. Some people believe that the spirits of those who died in the river still roam along the riversides. However, it's unclear whether these stories are true or they're just simply a developed folklore and people are just tripping over here. At our number 7 spot, we have Dev God. Devgat is a religious Hindu site located in Chitwan, also known as Aryagat. However, a chilling incident on July 12, 2009 shook the town when the skull of a female was recovered from the region. And it was just the beginning, as the police began to recover numerous bones and skulls from the area after that. The situation got even stranger when locals started witnessing four old women visiting the spot every night to perform a dance ritual. The women would set fire to themselves at midnight while performing, making it an eerie sight to behold. However, the discovery of human bones in this area is not new to locals, as Devgat is known as the land of cremation, and it is also considered a ceremonial site for black magic believers. In the past, skulls of various people were also reportedly removed from the spot, and nevertheless, the identity of these four old women still remains a mystery. Locals claim to see these four to five women apparitions approaching the river by night and they appear to be dancing, but they're floating above the ground. But the most crazy thing about this is that they do this dance while completely engulfed in flames. Number six, the Bokshi. Nepal legend says that witchcraft is widely practiced in remote areas of Nepal, except at this time, their witch description was far from accurate. Basically, any woman who had something bad to say or raised her voice at the patriarchy would be considered a witch or a bokshi. The problem with the term bokshi is that it has become so extreme that women are being murdered in the name of this specific ritual and are forced to become a ghost where they will be lost and seen roaming around the streets looking for answers. Even to this day, people are getting getting accused of being witches. Am I being confused or am I still living in the Salem witch trial still? Because why are people still believing in this stuff? A witch! In the Humphrey list, we have the Ranabon. Many people know Ranabon for their breathtaking views and incredible sceneries, but inside of this nature escape is hidden something very dark. Within the jungle of Ranabon village, there is a gigantic tree looking straight out of a cartoon with its widespread and exposing roots. Except. Take away the beauty from this tree, and you might understand why locals avoid this specific tree altogether. 
Warning, the story is pretty explicit. Legend goes that several years ago, a man assaulted and murdered a girl right underneath this tree. And after some research, this turned out to be a true story and has a lot more disturbing details I can't even mention. However, after her death, people in the area started to hear noticeable crying coming from under the tree. But when they went to investigate, nothing was there. And to make this even more spookier, just days after, the man who murdered the girl was executed by hanging on the very same tree. So best believe there's more than one ghost sitting under this tree and you should just probably avoid sitting here altogether. Number four, Dow Hill. Located in northeastern region of Nepal, lies a forest that will make you feel scared and uncomfortable the entire hike. The forest known as Dao Hill is considered one of the most haunted spots in Nepal and for good reason. Visitors to the forest have reported feeling a sense of being watched, almost as if eyes are following their every move. Some even claim to have catch glimpses of strange movements in their periphery, only to turn and find nothing there. However, the occurrences don't stop there. There has been reports of a screaming woman in the woods, and several visitors have claimed to see red eyes peeking at them from the trees above. But perhaps the most famous ghost sighting in Dow Hill is that of a headless boy, who has been seen wandering through the forest and down a street known as Death Road. What a lovely name. Even the high school situated beside the woods is believed to be haunted as well. Many visitors claim to hear loud whispers coming from inside the lockers and footsteps during the closed months. So best believe not only the woods are haunted, but this whole entire area. Number three, the ghost of Mount Everest. Being the tallest mountain in the entire world, people are bound to come in the thousands to conquer the challenge. However, with a fatality rate at 14%, many climbers have not been able to finish their trip and their bodies still lay on this mountain due to a lot of safety issues in recovering them. So best believe after seeing these bodies and hearing the horrific stories, some ghost stories in Everest are bound to pop up. On your journey to the top, chances are you'll come across the 3,000 corpses that lie on the mound to this day. One is a man only known as Green Boots, but his real name was Swang Paul Jor. Many climbers claim to see the apparition of a climber with green boots, encouraging them to push through it. Being at such an extreme height, many mountaineers suffer from altitude sickness and causes many to see vivid hallucinations, so this really isn't a surprise. But it's not hard to believe that there may be some ghosts lurking on this mountain still to this day. Number two, the Royal Palace of Nepal. On June 1st, 2001, one of the worst royal massacres occurred at the Royal Palace of Nepal, including King Birendra and Queen Ashwarya. The culprit turned out to be the son and crown prince, Dipendra, who was said to have opened fire on the palace grounds when a party was happening. He shot his own dad, mother, and his own siblings. He was appointed king, but only for a temporary time as he was in a coma since the attack due to shooting himself. Shortly after this massacre, locals around the palace began to report sounds of screaming, shouting, and the most notorious sound that they could document was the sound of gunshots. They claimed that it was the gunshots from the massacre and its haunting sounds are still trapped in this palace to this day. Number one, the water tank of Dapashi. Located in Dapashi Basundara, lies this innocently looking underground tank to store water around the community. Although this is necessary for any community and serves a benefit, many locals are actually too afraid to go anywhere near it. Of course, this doesn't mean they couldn't get water due to their fear. Instead, they would probably ask someone else to get it. But what could stop people from getting a basic necessity like water? Well, it all started with the sounds of crying, shouting, and other strange noises coming from inside of the tank. And it was said the sounds grew even louder by the nighttime. This is also the time where locals claim that they also see a spirit of a decomposing man standing nearby the tank. The legend says that a group of robbers mugged the man near the water tank, and instead of a quick theft, one of the men accidentally killed the man, or so they thought. Then they decide to put the man's body in this tank, but once they locked it, they could hear the man alive struggling for his life. Soon after, the man would pass and the robbers would eventually get caught. But just imagine that your drinking water used to have a decomposing body inside of it. Doesn't this remind anyone of Sisa Hotel? Anyone? At a number 10 spot, we have the Sugisawa, the cursed village. In Aoyama Prefecture, at the foot of a mountain, there was once a small village called Sugisawa. Story goes that one day, a man who lived there went completely insane and he did just that because within a single day, the entire population of the village was completely wiped out. After the incident, the local government made a decision to try and hide the incident, meanwhile erasing all sorts of evidence that the village ever existed. However, despite the efforts of the government, the story of Sugisawa has survived through the memories of the people who lived in the areas nearby. 
And according to the legend, there were three signs that revealed the path to this village. A warning sign on the road leading to the village, an old rotting shrine gate at the entrance of the village with a stone shaped like human skull beneath it, and an abandoned building with blood stains on the walls. One particular story about the village involves three people who stumbled upon the village while driving up into the mountains. They saw the old beat up shrine gate with a stone shaped like a skull beneath it and decided to explore within the village. After passing under the shrine gate, they found four abandoned buildings. Inside one of the buildings, they found a large amount of dried blood on the walls. And then suddenly, the woman in the group felt a presence and they all fled in fear. And when they discovered her, she had pure white hair. And when more help was coming, the girl just suddenly vanished. The two men were also never found, and ever since, this place has become known as the most cursed village in all of Japan. At a number 9 spot, we have Gozu, or the Cowhead. Gozu, also known as the Cowhead, is a terrifying Japanese urban legend that has been around since the 17th century. The story goes that there is a creature with the body of a man and the head of a cow that can cause all sorts of supernatural and terrifying events simply by telling its story. And guess what I'm doing today? Telling the story. Legend has it that an entire village was traumatized by the tale and isolated themselves out of fear. The central government caught wind of the story and fearing it would cause another mass panic, they banned any mention of Gozu. However, the story has still managed to spread throughout Japan. One tale tells of a school teacher who used Gozu to keep his students well behaved on a field trip. He promised to tell them the most mysterious and gloomy story he had ever told, but only if they all behaved well. When the teacher finally told the story, many of the students began to scream and cover their ears. But as if he didn't hear or see them, the man continued with his story. His eyes then turned white and his voice became much deeper than it was in the beginning of his story. As if he was possessed by the Gozu himself. The aftermath was a horrific scene. None of the students ever talked about what happened as they were too scared and even they were confused by the events that just followed. Kinda sucks that I'm talking about Gozu since it's associated with bad luck. But hey, that's my job. I do it for you guys. Number 8, The Corner Game. The Corner Game, also known as the Square or Four Corners Game, is a popular urban legend game that originated in East Asia, more specifically in parts of Japan and or Korea. The whole purpose of the game is to summon a supernatural entity. So as you can tell, what a great game to play. The origin of the game is unclear, with some sources suggesting it is Korean, while others believing it is based on a Japanese story. However, it doesn't really matter. The game requires an empty room and the players must turn off all the lights except for the ones in the room. The players must then stand in four corners of the room and face the corner. The speaker counts to three and each player moves clockwise to the next person's position. During the ritual, supernatural situations such as an extra person or a missing person are said to occur. If there is a missing person, the players must speak their name backwards three times and then put their backs against the wall. The person closest to the light should then turn it off and the missing person will reappear. If there is an extra person, the players must gather at the light switch and speak their names backwards three times again. After that, they should open the lights and leave the room without speaking to the extra person. And you might be asking, what happens if you speak to the extra person? Well, there's a slight chance you might pass away. So there's that. Have fun playing. At a number 7 spot, we have Yamanoke. In 2007, a creepy story called Yamanoke was posted on 2chan, which is a popular Japanese forum for those who don't know. And as soon as it got uploaded, it quickly gained notoriety all over the sites. The story revolves around a white body creature in the mountains that possesses a young girl. And her father is warned that if they don't save her within 49 days, she'll be lost forever. The creature is described as resembling Jamila from Ultraman, and it has since become an urban legend in Japan. And this creature looks like something else. It doesn't have a head, but instead one large human face with a broad grin straight across the chest. And, oh yeah, it hops around on one leg. The story takes place in the mountains that border Miyazaki and Yamagata prefectures, particularly on Tashiro Ridge. This area is known for its strange events such as ghostly rumors, UFO sightings, and even a rumored underground military base. It's not surprising that a creature like the Yamanoke would fit right in with all these other oddities reported in this area. So what exactly is a Yamanake? Some people believe it could be an alien that frequently visits Tashiro Ridge, but others think it's most likely a spirit or a kami. Kami are Japanese spirits that inhabit various natural elements, including mountains. They're often associated with Japanese folklore and mythology, and some people believe they have the power to possess humans. 
Number six, the purple mirror. Back in the day, there was a young girl who was given a mirror by her mother. The girl loved the mirror so much that he spent most of her time staring at herself in it. She was so desperate to be beautiful that she did everything possible to maintain her beauty. And so every time she looked in the mirror, she felt gorgeous as a result of her hard work. However, after a few years, the girl decided to redecorate and painted the mirror purple. When she looked into it, she was shocked by her appearance. She was dangerously thin and her hair was limp and stringy. The obsessive beauty standards that she had put on herself had taken a toll on her body now and now she could see that she was not maintaining her beauty she was actually sabotaging it the girl then threw the mirror on the ground completely shattering it then a little while later she was making the final arrangements for her coming of age party on her 20th birthday when she was caught in a freak car accident people say that she perished on the scene while whispering purple mirror purple mirror purple mirror and after this was reported her parents decided to search for this mirror but they never ended up finding it the legend has it that if you do not forget the phrase purple mirror by your 20th birthday the same thing will happen to you or that if you have a purple mirror just completely remove it out of your home just do it in the hump of our list we have kayoko do you remember her this was definitely a fear for 90 percent of y'all the eerie humming sound combined with the black hair covering the face early 2000s horror peak at its finest. As many of you know, Kayoko is a vengeful spirit who haunts those who enter her home. In the official novel written by Kei Ohishi and based on other Japanese iterations, she spent most of her time with her cat Kuro and was highly antisocial. Then in college, Kayoko met Kobayashi and fell deeply in love with him. She marries another one named Takio Saki, the only person who understands and cares for her during this hard time. As time goes by, Kayoko begins to have feelings for Kobayashi again, which she writes in her journal. Takio then discovers her journal and becomes obsessed with the idea that Kayoko is cheating on him with Kabayashi. Or even worse, that their son Toshio might not actually be his. As a result, he violently attacks Kayoko, leaving her paralyzed and unable to move, before finally snapping her neck and crushing her throat. So painful and torturous that she becomes an Oliro, a vengeful spirit who haunts those who enter her home. And if you've seen the movies, you definitely don't want to enter her home at any cost because there's nothing good that comes out of it. Number four, the Honeona. In Japanese mythology, the Honeona or Bone Woman is a spirit whose face, hands, and neck appear to be that of a young attractive female. However, the rest of her body bears no flesh at all. Hence, her bone name. It's said that she uses her beauty to seduce unsuspecting men where she would lure them into a dark, isolated area. I bet these guys are thinking that they're the man, alone in Japan with a pretty girl. However, this is exactly what Honeona wants them to think. Because when they're alone, she reveals her true form and then sucks their life force energy, leaving them as a pile of dust. In other accounts, the Honeona are said to be spirits of a young woman who cannot move on from their past lovers. To their loved ones, they look normal, but for everyone else, they appear as the bone woman. Regardless of who is in front of them, they will suck up their life's energy, causing illness or all sorts of other tragedies in the process. I don't think I'll be ever falling in love with a pretty girl ever again, especially in Japan after seeing this one. Number three, the ghost of the tsunami. The second season of the popular show Unsolved Mysteries has taken viewers to Ishinomaki, Miyagi, Japan, where a 9.1 magnitude earthquake followed by a powerful tsunami struck in March 2011. The survivors have struggled to cope with the disaster's aftermath, but the fourth episode of Unsolved Mysteries titled Tsunami Spirits uncovers the story of the victims themselves. Multiple people in the area reported supernatural encounters with ghosts who were looking to find their way home after the disaster. Sociology graduate student Yuka Kuru was writing a paper in the months after the tsunami struck, focused on the experience of taxi cab drivers in the region who were convinced that they had given rides to ghosts. Kudo spoke to more than 100 taxi cab drivers in the stricken area, and seven were forthcoming with their experiences. The episode also features Reverend Tayo Kanada, a Buddhist monk who worked with people who claimed to be possessed by the spirits from the tsunami. Richard Lloyd Perry, in his book Ghosts of the Tsunami, Death and Life in Japan's Disaster, summarizes the experiences of Takashi Ono, who lived miles away from the tsunami, but became possessed after driving to the beach to survey the devastation. Increased sightings of ghosts after the tsunami were theorized to be the result of PTSD. But it's just crazy to think that multiple people had similar experiences after this devastating event. It's probably ghosts. Number two, the Kune Kune. The legend arose in Japan where sightings of a creature are reported in rice fields or in an open sea. The creature resembles a tall white mannequin made of fabric almost like an inflatable tube man. There's a story where one summer, two brothers decide to visit their grandparents in the countryside. They're playing outside when they notice a figure in the distance, wiggling in the wind. 
But when the wind stopped, the figure kept on wiggling. Curious, the older brother took binoculars to see the figure, but as he did, he stopped breathing and turned blue with sweat running down his entire body. The younger brother asked what he saw and the older brother responded that, quote, it's better not to know. But the voice that came out was not his brother's. Later that day, the older brother was found laughing uncontrollably, wiggling in the field similar to the creature he saw earlier. The family was terrified and decided to leave the farm, but leave the older brother behind with the grandparents. But as the family was leaving, the little brother looked out at his window at his older brother in the field and all he could see was his brother laughing with somewhat a sad smile on his face. And guess what? He was still wiggling. A little while after seeing this, the younger brother would begin to show symptoms of cold sweats and uncontrollable laughter. And as the family moved into the new house, the younger brother would end up in a field wiggling just like his brother. Number one, the Peko-chan. Peko-chan is the mascot of the Milky Candies, but her story is more sour than sweet. The story goes that Peko-chan was actually based on a young girl who passed away during the 1940s. The legend goes that during World War II, there was a huge food shortage in Japan, and because of this, many people including women and children were starving to death. So Peko-chan's mother decided to cut a piece of her arm off and even offered it to Peko to eat. This is the moment where Peko-chan discovered how tasty human flesh was. In fact, she had never tasted anything so good in her life. She couldn't resist with just a piece, so she decided to kill her mom and eat her entire body. And ever since, she's been constantly craving human meat, living the rest of her days as a cannibal. In the logo, it's said that she keeps her tongue out because she's licking her mother's blood off her cheeks. And if that wasn't enough, the company's slogan is directly translated to Milky Tastes Like a Mama. Guess I'm never eating these candies ever again, especially if I decide to visit Japan. Coming in at our number 10 spot, we have the Elevator Game. The Elevator Game is a mysterious and potentially dangerous ritual that is said to bring you to another world. This game has its origins in Japan and is played by entering an elevator in a public building with at least 10 floors. The player must press specific buttons in a specific order without anyone entering or even leaving the elevator in order to reach this other world. In the other world, electronics do not work, the lights are off, and all that can be seen from the windows is a red cross in the distance. To return back to the original world, the players must repeat the sequence of button presses and be very vigilant of their surroundings. The player must be careful not to look at the woman who enters the elevator on the fifth floor as she is not human. If someone enters or even leaves the elevator during the ritual, the players must start over. And you must be wondering what the specific ritual is, but if you guys actually want to know about that, search it up because I'm not going to say it for you guys because I don't want you guys doing this. Because for those who have played, it is said that if they faint or lose consciousness during the ritual, they may wake up in their own home. But they must be careful to examine their surroundings as it may not be the same home they left. It is important to not attempt this ritual too many times as well as it can lead to an accidental slipping between both worlds. And it's also worth mentioning that if the woman does not enter the elevator or the players do not reach the 10th floor, they should immediately return to the first floor and completely end the game. At our number 9 spot, we have the Rokurokubi, the long neck demon. The legend of the Rokurokubi is a supernatural creature from Japanese mythology that originated during the Edo period, which is 1603 to 1867. The Rokurobi is a beautiful woman by day, but at night she undergoes a metamorphosis where her neck extends and she begins to hunt. Some versions of this legend says that this creature can be recognized by small white marks on their neck, or even by the way they sleep with their head far from their body. But in reality, when I see photos of this, all I can think is, if they got a long neck, they're probably this creature. According to folklore, however, there are different explanations for the origin of this creature. Some believe they were once Buddhists who broke the religion's principles and were then cursed as punishment, while other people believe, while other people see the transformation as a supernatural expression of the person's desires. There are also legends that suggest they are Oni, which are these Japanese demons seeking revenge or even simply just playing tricks on humans. And it's also worth mentioning that this creature comes in many different forms, with female ones attacking men and male ones attacking women. The Nukekubi is one of the most dangerous forms, however, known for its detached head that just flies around and attacks its prey. At our number 8 spot, we have Hitobashira. 
Hitobashira, also known as human pillars, is a custom of human sacrifice that was once practiced in Japan. It involved burying a victim alive under or near large scale buildings, such as dams, bridges, and castles. The practice was believed to appease the gods and protect the structure from natural disasters and enemy attacks. The practice was believed to appease the gods and protect the structure from natural disasters and enemy attacks. The tradition of human sacrifice in Japan dates back to the construction of aristocratic tombs in ancient times. The the use of human pillars persisted in various parts of Japan until the 16th century. Legend has it that the Maruoka Castle, one of the oldest surviving castles in Japan, was built with the help of a human pillar named Oshizu. When the stone wall of the castle kept collapsing, a vassal suggested the use of a human sacrifice, Oshizu, who is this one-eyed woman living in poverty who volunteered to even become this human pillar in the first place. But she did this under one condition, and that one condition being that one of her sons was turned into a samurai. She was buried under the central pillar of the castle keep, and the construction was successfully completed. However, her son was not made a samurai, and thus her spirit has caused moat to overflow with spring rain every single year, and some people even report to see her ghost when they enter and visit this castle. As a result, people erected a small tomb to soothe her spirit, and a poem was even handed down about the rain caused by the tears of Oshizu's sorrow. It is speculated that the instability of the walls of the Maroka castle was due to the design of the castle in the first place, which is more indicative of earlier fortresses. On the other hand, the Matsu castle is also rumored to have been constructed on human sacrifice buried under the castle stone walls. The victim was a beautiful young maiden who was fond of dancing and is referred to as the Maiden of the Matsu. After the castle was built, a law was passed forbidding any girl to dance in the streets of Matsu because the hill Oshiruyama would shudder and the castle would shake from top to bottom. Although this practice has not been continued, it's just crazy to think that this was actually done and some of the pillars in Japan actually contain real human sacrifice. At our number 7 spot, we have the Kisaragi Station. In 2004, a 2chan user named Hasumi posted on a thread asking for help because she got on the wrong train at Shin Hamatsu Station. This was rather strange because she usually caught the same train after work and trains in the station only go in one direction. She started getting really anxious because she remembered the stops only being a few minutes between each station, but on this specific train ride, they were just much longer. They even went through a tunnel, but her usual line didn't go through any sort of tunnel. She walked to the front car to ask the conductor for help, but the curtain was closed and no one answered. She then knocked on the door, but that's when the train suddenly stopped at Kisaragi Station. As she left the train, she was filled with huge anxiety and fear, but as she tried to go back, the train door shut on her. As all this was happening, she was messaging people on this discussion board on 4chan about the station, but when they all replied, they had said that no such station existed in Japan. She decided to exit the station and walk back along the tracks, even back through the tunnel she had gone through under earlier. She reported strange sounds like drums in the distance, and even a voice telling her that walking on the tracks is extremely dangerous. As she grew more afraid, she turned back to go around, but she saw an old man with one leg, which then slowly disappeared right after. When she finally got out of the tunnel, a man came up offering help and to drive her to the nearest station. This is when she posted on the thread for the very last time, saying that the man was muttering to himself, then her phone died, and she was never heard from the thread again. At a number 6 spot with the 1932 Shirokiya Department Store. On December 16, 1932, tragedy struck the Shirokiya Department Store in Japan during their year end Christmas theme sale. The festive decorations of the season turned into a nightmare as a fire broke out at the toy section just a few minutes before the store was about to open. The fire quickly spread to floors 4 and 8, filling the staircase with smoke and cutting off major escape routes. This left many shoppers and employees stranded on the upper floors, desperate for a way to find safety. Some of those who were trapped made makeshift ropes from clothing or curtains and climbed down to safety. Others were not so lucky. They instead fell to their deaths or even suffocated in the smoke-filled building. In total, 14 people lost their lives and 67 were injured in the Shirokiya department store fire. In the aftermath of the fire, stories and legends began to circulate about the tragedy. One particularly interesting legend related to the traditional dress of the saleswoman in the store. At the time, it was customary for women who wore traditional kimonos to go without panties. According to this urban legend, some of the saleswomen in kimonos who were trapped on the upper floors chose not to jump the safety nets that had been set up below 
because they were just ashamed to not be seen below without underwear. While there is no real proof that this legend actually existed, it is said to have led on to an increase in the popularity of western style panties in Japan, which is both odd and kind of terrifying at the same time. I don't know what to think. In the hub for a list, we have the ghost taxi passengers. After the devastating 311 earthquake and tsunami that hit the northeastern Japan coast, sightings of yuri or ghosts have increased drastically in cities like Ishinomaki and Miyagi Prefecture. As these spirits have not been properly put to rest, some may have not even been aware that they are dead and are often searching for a way home. As a result, taxi drivers all over this place have long been subject to ghostly encounters in the form of passengers trying to go home or to a very specific place. This has almost become a norm for taxi drivers around Japan to be asked if they had ever had a ghostly passenger before. Tahoku Gaoin University conducted a study called the Awakened Spiritual Earthquake Studies that involve interviews with more than 100 Ishinomaki taxi drivers who had supernatural encounters. Many drivers reported picking up passengers who seemed to be wet or wearing winter coats in the summer, months after the disaster in the cold months of March. Most drivers reported running the meter and having to pay the fee for the vanished passenger. One particular driver reported a chilling story about a man in winter clothing whom he, whom he picked up in the summer who asked to be taken to an address that had been destroyed. The driver asked if he was sure that that was the address as it was just a vacant lot to which the passenger replied by asking, am I dead? Number four, the Red Room Curse. The Red Room Curse is a Japanese urban legend that originated from an interactive Adobe Flash horror animation uploaded to GeoCities in the late 1990s. The legend tells the story of a pop-up ad that appears on the victim's computer screen displaying a black text that reads, do you like question mark on a red background. After trying to close the pop-up, it reappears with a new message that reads, do you like the Red Room? Before the screen just turns completely red, displaying a list of names of the Red Room victims. This is when the victim senses a mysterious presence behind them before losing consciousness and later being found dead in a room with blood painted walls. The legend gained notoriety in 2004 when a 12 year old schoolgirl was murdered by an 11 year old classmate known as Girl A in Sasebo. It was reported that Girl A was a fan of the Red Room Curse animation and had the video bookmarked on her computer at the time of her death. And of course, this incident led to widespread discussion and fear for this curse. Then in 2016, a short film titled The Red Room Curse was released and was inspired by this urban legend, of course. The film brings the legend to life and is sure to give anyone who watched it a chilling experience. So if you guys kind of want to know what this Red Room is about, watch this film because it'll give you all the insights. Number three, the Ushioni. The world of Japanese mythology is full of terrifying creatures, but none are quite as fearsome as the Ushioni, also known as the Ox Demon. This class of monster is found near bodies of water and is known for its savage and cruel nature. Although there are different types of Ushioni, they all share similar traits that make them unmistakable. Perhaps the most terrifying thing about these monsters is their unsatiable appetite for human flesh. Then on top of that, they breathe toxic poison, making them even more deadly. The Ushioni is not to be trifled with as well, and many people who have encountered one have not lived to tell the tale. It is worth mentioning that the Ushioni is not always a solitary creature either. They are known to work together with other yokai or supernatural creatures, such as the Nuraona and the Isoona. These yokai use their charms to lure unsuspecting men towards the water, where the Ushioni is waiting to pounce and make a meal of its victims. The appearance of the Ushioni is quite unique and interesting as well. Much of them resemble an ox from the head up, but their body is a demonic horror. However, there are many variations on this theme, including one with a spider-like body, another one with a cat-like body, and even one with the body of a kimono-clad human. Pretty terrifying. Number two, the cursed Kleenex commercial. In 1986, Kleenex released a commercial in Japan that sparked a series of disturbing urban legends. The ad featured a woman in white and an ogre looking child sitting on a pile of hay and enjoying Kleenex tissues, all while singing the song It's a Fine Day by Jane and Barden, played in the background. Almost instantly after the commercial was aired, TV stations and Kleenex corporate allegedly began receiving complaints about the ad, with many people finding unsettling. Some claim that the entire film crew met untimely deaths in freak accidents following this, while others said that the child in the commercial had passed away immediately after filming this. There are also rumors that the actress Kaiko Matsuzaka had either passed away or even been committed to a psychiatric hospital. Others claim that when the ad came on at night, the singer's voice in the commercial transformed from that of a young soprano to a raspy old woman's. And the ad was so unsettling to the public that Kleenex eventually pulled it off air and replaced it 
with a completely different one. At our number one spot, we have the Kaikoji Temple. This place has nothing really scary about it, except the fact that it has mummified bodies on display. Okay, maybe it's a bit scary. These mummified figures are known as the Shukuonbutsu, also known as the Living Buddha or Buddha Mummies. These are in fact real people, and these are the bodies of the priests who belong to the Shingon sect of Japanese Buddhism. All these mummies we see are priests who made the drastic decision in self-mummification. And I don't know what it is, but there's something about a body that being fully intact for hundreds of years that makes it so creepy. The process for the mummification would actually be very intense as well, and for the first 1000 days, and it would go a little something like this. For the first 1000 days, they would do extreme fasting and exercising, then on the next 1000 days, they would reduce their diet to a bare minimum in order to fit in this thing. The last 1000 days would consist of entombment, basically many would bury themselves alive, essentially while in a deep state of meditation in order to reach enlightenment. At our number 10 spot, we have the Mongolian Death Worm. The Gobi Desert located between Mongolia and China is said to have the Mongolian Death Worm, otherwise known as the Intestine Worm due to its appearance of being fleshy and red in color. This 2-7 to seven feet long creature has the ability to spit out venomous liquid out of its mouth, and if you even get close enough to touch the creature, it's believed that the entire body is covered in this sticky, poisonous substance that will kill you just on touch alone. Alone. And if that wasn't enough, it can even electrocute you in the same way in Yokan. While movies of the creature depicted as this large, colossal being, it's believed to be a lot smaller at around 7 feet in its total length. But regardless, the fact that this creature can hide literally anywhere in the desert sands and come out basically whenever it wants, and it has no weaknesses, it makes it one of the most dangerous and scariest ones on this list. At number 9 spot, we have the Diao Si Gui. This mythical creature is also known as the Hanged Ghost, and it's said that the people who have taken their life through hanging or have been executed that way come back and become this vengeful spirit. They claim the spirit appears as a decaying corpse with a long red tongue that hangs far out of their mouth, never going back into their mouth. And let me tell you, these guys smell horrendous as well. So you could imagine how terrifying this would be to encounter. Except if you're a KISS fan and you're used to this sticking tongue stuff. According to legend, these spirits will appear to unsuspecting people during night, usually by a tree or a building. Then they'll try to convince others to join them in the afterlife. So in China, it's best to avoid places where people have taken their life because this is where these spirits tend to wander. If you decide to do the complete opposite, the creature will follow you around for your entire life, causing bad luck every corner of the way. At number 8 spot, we have the Akaname. The Akaname is straight out of Japanese myth. It's described to be this small goblin looking creature about the size of a child, except they're hideous. They have greasy slimy hair and their body is completely oily. If that didn't make you uncomfortable, Maybe the fact that they use their long tongues to lip bathroom floors will. But don't worry, they won't appear in clean bathrooms as their dirty long tongues have nothing to lick. Instead, they target bathrooms that have been neglected and are dirty. So people, do yourself and everyone a favor and clean your bathrooms, please. They lick and devour any of the filth, grease, hair, and waste that they come across. And the Akaname also chooses to stay away from humans. But instead, they creep in the darkness and multiply at rates comparable to a disease spreading. They come in both one-eyed and two-eyed variations, which only adds to the fact that these are grotesque creatures. So I stress this again, clean your bathroom so we can all avoid these type of problems, including stuff with these ugly guys. At number 7 spot, we have the Zhangxi, also known as the Chinese Hopping Vampire. The Zhangxi comes from a phrase meaning stiff corpse. They are psychic vampire zombies, yes, you heard that right, who feeds off a person's chi rather than their blood. And for those who don't know, chi is considered to be a person's life force, which means that it's the energy that flows throughout your entire body, basically giving you life in a sense. So unlike the vampires we have over here in the west, the Zhangxi prefers not to consume humans or our blood, and they also aren't able to walk so they are seen hopping around with their hands out in the front of them to maintain their balance. Many believe these creatures are created following a violent death, an improper burial, use of supernatural powers, or you get bit by another one. Remember, they're vampires and zombies, so don't get it confused. This is a horror hybrid of this century. At number 6 spot, we're the Sigbin. Straight out of my home country is yet another disgusting and hideous creature. This creature is said to have the appearance of a half hornless goat and half kangaroo, but when I look at it, I think of a chupacabra, but worse. It has the ability to use its long kangaroo tail to whip others with the force able to knock someone out. They lurk mainly in the night and are known to hunt anyone or anything they see. They will use their sharp teeth to suck out the blood 
blood out of their victims, or they'll use it to seek out children to take their hearts just to use for decorations. So pretty horrible stuff, I know, I'm sorry kids. When they do walk around, they actually prefer to walk backwards with their head tucked between their legs like this. Locals in the Philippines claim that some people capture them and keep them as guardians for their property or in these very large jars. I have no idea what my people are doing, but yeah, let's not do this. In the hump of our list, we have the Zheng Lot. These are small creatures located in Indonesia, but mainly claim their presence specifically in Java. They take on the appearance of a deformed humanoid doll with long growing hair and long nails. The doll by itself causes no harm, but when you begin to feed the doll animal blood or even human blood, it will start to work as black magic. A Zheng Lot is believed to belong to the vampire family because of its main nourishment comes from the blood of animals or humans. The owner of the Zheng Lot must feed the creature with a drop of their blood each and every single day. If the owner fails to do so, it is believed that their loved ones will face dire consequences. The blood must not be fed directly to the mouth of the Zheng Lot, but instead be placed beside it. It's believed that the Zheng Lots are the spirits of those who passed away after they had practiced black magic in order to obtain everlasting life. Except when they're met with death, the earth would refuse to accept their body, instead turning them into this hideous bloodthirsting creature. At number four, we have the flying head. This one is definitely the strangest one on this list, but it's still scary, so bear with me. The flying head, or the Shurubotoshi, is, is one of Japan's most craziest mythical creatures because it's literally just a floating head. It's believed to be an ancient deity that literally is just a flying head that goes around and eats people. They prefer to attack humans by surprise, by hiding on the top of trees, or in places where you're completely alone. When they catch up to you, they will drop quickly to the ground like a stone, either squishing you to death or trapping you in its mouth to chew you right after. Either way, you will pass away. If you do manage to evade them, they will stop at nothing to get you, and will do so while laughing uncontrollably, which only makes this encounter that much more terrifying. At number three spot, we have the Tao Ti. These creatures from Chinese mythology are definitely one of the most hideous looking creatures from this list of creatures. And we know how beautiful China makes some of these creatures, so this one was just a surprise. They are considered to be one of the four evil creatures of the world due to its malevolence and destruction as a creature. If you ever wanted to see these boys in action, Depiction of this creature would appear mainly on Broughton's artifacts, but that first glimpse of them on that movie was all we needed to know that these creatures are not good. At number two spot, we have the Tengu. If you ever seen this emoji, then you know what a Tengu somewhat looks like. These creatures live in the mountains and appear to have large feathery wings and wearing a monk robe. Based on the emoji, you already know that their face is red with a long nose and the head of a bird. Originally, the Tengu were seen as evil spirits that caused pure destruction and chaos everywhere they went. This was because Buddhist practice just showed that the Tengu were demons and tricksters who opposed Buddha. Tengu were considered demons of death and destruction by Buddhists, but gradually softened into troublesome protectors of forests and mountains, which is the role they continue to play in Japanese folklore. I mean, they look pretty cool and I see it all the time every time I go on my keyboard, and it would be nice if they use them in a video game or something because they're pretty cool looking creatures. At number one spot, we're the Nian. To end our point, we got yet another Chinese mythical creature because there are just too many not to mention. The story of the the Nian goes that they would feast on human flesh every single New Year's Day. On this day, they would come out of their hiding place in the mountains and raid villages, eat their crops, and when that wasn't enough, they would attack the humans. Except they would begin to notice that the creature would run away by the end of the night when they started to celebrate New Year's. They started to believe it was because they used a lot of the color red, which was the same color as the Nian, which could have acted as intimidation. They also noticed that fire and a lot of noise would scare away the creature, so every single year the festivals got bigger and larger louder to frighten the beast away for good. The Neon is described as being a flat faced lion with the body of a bull and the horn of a unicorn. And ever since, the Neon has been used during the festivals to commemorate the once terrifying creature.